or lease from in the morning. What do you get when you combine big hair, big guns, big, um, personalities, and a serious lack of wardrobe? She-Wolves of the Wasteland, a post-apocalyptic classic that features women, lots and lots of women, who leave little to the imagination as they battle each other in various junkyards and gravel pits to determine the fate of the entire world. Leave your brain behind for this shamelessly sinful sexploitation romp with a plot you won't remember, but plenty of eye candy you won't forget. I'm Corey. And I'm Paul. And we are the, the B-Movie Movie Bros. Bros. Here review B-Movies to the best of our ability. Sometimes we get off topic, but randomness is a gift. This week, as we continue our journey through Sexploitation Month, we are taking a look at the 1988 or 87, depending on your source, classic She-Wolves of the Wasteland. You heard what the back of the DVD box had to say. Let's dive right into this shit with our technical difficulties. Top and bottom three. All right, let's start with the uh, bottom three first. Ooh, yay. All right, for number three, for a bunch of savage warrior women, they get killed so easily. Most of them were only good at one thing, and that was dying. Number two, the acting in this was just overall terrible. There actually was no good performance throughout the entire film. But to be fair, I don't think anybody was really watching it for the great acting. And number one, not enough boobs, which made this already slow-paced movie seem even longer due to the fact that you're just constantly waiting for more, and it never really happens. For me, number three, the action in this movie is so horrible. Like, I see children fighting on a playground, and it's better action than this movie provides, with its, you know, many scenes of shooting and axe fighting and sword fighting and action-y action that's not very action-y. Number two... The audio quality of this movie really had me straining to hear the dialogue, which really leaves a lot to be desired, even when you can hear it. And we had the volume of the TV up, like, almost the whole way. Number one, the length between the action sequences just seemed so long because nothing really happens. I mean, they're wandering around a desert, they talk, you can't hear what the fuck they're saying, and... You know, then, like, 15 minutes later, like, people show up and they start, you know, terribly shooting at each other, you know, swinging axes or something. And it gets a little fun for a bit. But, uh, yeah, not, uh, not the best downtime. How about the top three? All right, number three. This movie knew how stupid it was and kind of made fun of itself at times, though I kind of disagree at the back. This movie definitely took itself more seriously than it really should have. Number two, there's so much 80s about this movie. It's 80s hair, 80s style of music, 80s everything. You gotta appreciate the 80s. It was an odd, like, yet kind of awesome time period as far as fashion and music was, was concerned. And number one, there was a decent amount of boobs, at least in the beginning of it. There's a scene where there's a bunch of naked women under a waterfall, and that was pretty cool. Unfortunately, that's basically the extent of it. For me, number three, at an hour 25 minutes, this film really isn't too long um, as to make it unbearable. Yes, the scenes between the action and the nudity are drawn out and boring. Shouldn't have existed in the first place. Boring as all hell. But, you know, the scenes that do have stuff going on, although it's not the greatest, like this movie says, you're not going to really remember what's going on, but you're going to remember that it's full of stuff. Number two, there is a fair amount of action in the film. Uh, it's bad action, but it's action nonetheless. And it, it really is fun to sit through and watch and just be like, <laughs> that just happened. Number one, this movie is indeed filled with scantily clad women. I mean, I, I can't argue any way against that. It, it is. And there, there are, you know, very limited scenes of uh, nudity. But, uh, yeah, the costumes are very... Uh, Leave, leave little to the imagination. They definitely don't serve as very good body armor. I, I would fire whoever made them. I mean, they may have been going by, like, you know, Dungeons and Dragons rules, where the, the less armor a woman has, the higher her armor class. Yeah, I don't think that works in real life. I mean, I'm not an expert on armor, so maybe it does, but... Yeah. It's, it's the apocalypse. I mean, it's, it, it's possible. 
Well, you know, I, I had a little bit to say about the dialogue. Uh, it's, it's, it's not too great, but we still managed to uh, get ourselves a little ammunition for a quote war. Quote war. So we're going to quote this movie back and forth and uh, see who comes out on top. I guess I'll get us started this week with The child has been born. It's a boy. It's a fucking boy. The only man in the wasteland, and I broke him. There's nothing more useless than a man that doesn't work. Damn you to hell, bitch. Don't fuck with me. I'm having a bad day. And that ends this episode's edition of Quote Wars. If you've seen She Wolves of the Wasteland and have a favorite quote, please leave it below in the comments or on our website, bmoviebros.com. Well, I think it's time that we give this movie our final take. Remember, friends, our final take is a score on our shot scale. Our shot scale is a reverse scale, 1 to 10, 1 being the best, 10 being the worst. How many shots do you need to get through this film? I gave it a 5 out of 10. I gave it a 6 out of 10. Wait. Oh, I mean, damn it. Paul, like, you, uh, keep, you keep doing that. It's like 10 takes. Like, um, I, I, I'll cut this it, out it's later. It's 6. It's an I, six. not an E. Okay. I, I don't know why I keep making that mistake. Damn it. Well, why did you give it a 6 out of 10? <laughs> I give it a sex out of 10 because She Wolves of the Wasteland had all the needed elements for a cheesy sex exploitation parody action film. It had boobs, it had cheesy acting, and a stupid plot. What more could you ask for? In fact, it even took place in the desert. Unfortunately, this movie wastes so much time doing absolutely nothing that all the good qualities are easily overshadowed. I was hoping this movie would be a non-stop tits in action, but unfortunately... It takes so long to get to either one of those elements that it's hardly worth the time. Damn it, movie. You had one job. How do you fuck that up? Well, I mean, at, at the beginning, you, you heard what the back of the box had to say. I cannot describe this movie in any other way. I can't add or detract from it in any fashion to be more factual. This movie has guns. It has girls. It has little to no plot. And that, that's the whole premise here. They were like, hey, girls, let, the less clothes, the better. Let's put them on screen. We got a fucking movie. It, it works. It's a film. Is it great? No. Is it unbearable? No. Straight down the middle. Five out of ten. Henceforth, a five out of ten. This movie is basically um, if Lord of the Rings was, was, fil- was made with porn stars and took place in the desert because it's just some cool scenes and then a lot of walking and a lot more walking. And too much walking. And more walking. So I think uh, I, I think enough about uh, this. I, we know not everyone likes to watch the same kind of shit that we do. So uh, we give every B-movie review an A-movie companion and tell you why this uh, A-movie is the same as this B-movie, just of a higher class and standard. For me, I picked the 1985 film Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. I picked the original Mad Max, Mad Max, but from 1979. I have to say that... Uh, she Wolves of the Wasteland and Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome are the same movie because they take place after the apocalypse. They're set in the desert. There's lots of action-y action. And there are times where people have to fight to the death in an arena. That's it. I don't really fucking care. I pick Mad Max because both movies take place in a post-apocalyptic desert world. Both movie both. Both post-apocalyptic worlds are full of violent and savage gangs that roam the lands, attacking people that aren't part of their gang. The plot of both movies revolves to some degree around the life of a young boy. In She-Wolves of the Wasteland, the woman who Phoenix saves at the start of the film gives birth to what is supposedly the last male in existence, but actually isn't. And in Mad Max, Max's son, Sprague, gets murdered by a gang of desert thugs, thus prompting Max to go on a murderous rampage of revenge. And She-Wolves of the Wasteland was made in 1987, making it undeniably 80s. And Mad Max was made in 1979, so it's basically honorary 80s. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the only thing that uh, it's really missing is, is Max himself. Yeah, otherwise um, would have basically been the same film. Yeah. You know, I just, I, I, I couldn't help but, like, any time they, they started a fight inside the arena in, in She-Wolves of the Wasteland, I just wanted someone to go, Two men enter! One man leave! This is Thunderdome! And and nobody did it. I was like, fuck, man. That would have been great. Why why am I not watching Mad Max be on Thunderdome? Yeah, I feel like Mad Max 
and Mad Max 2 were basically the only films we could have picked for the well, well, A Movie Companion. Well, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome is the third movie, Paul. Uh, whatever. Yeah, there's... I, yeah. It's, it, it, it's a common misconception, but there, there are more... There, there are a bunch of them. But uh, anyway, I think it's time to uh, drink away the flick. Drink away the flick. Come on and grab your drink. Let's drink away the flick. Bum, 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 bum. Why did I sing it like that? Because I'm... I don't fucking know. We've been drinking too much. Or not enough. That's, I'm going to go with not, not enough. enough. But remember, friends, drink responsibly. We'll give you some drinking games for this fucking film. Number one, anytime there's a gunfight, take a drink. Number two, whenever someone pulls out a fucking sword during the gunfight, take a drink. Number three, anytime the Reverend Mother, who looks like a fucking female Emperor Palpatine, is on screen, take a drink. Number four, whenever somebody is surprised about something... Because, you know, we live through the fucking apocalypse, so everything's going to startle us. Take a drink. And, of course, number five, because it's Sexploitation Month, anytime you see something that is supposed to be arousing, take a drink. Every time one of the women talks about males supposedly being extinct, or except for the few that are kept for breeding purposes, take a drink. Every time someone is shot, take a drink. Every time someone is shown wearing ridiculously impractical body armor, take a drink. And every time yells and it sounds like they're having an orgasm, take a drink. And those are your ways to drink away the flick. If you have any thoughts about this movie or anything else a B-movie related, you can leave a comment on either our YouTube or our SoundCloud pages right below the video. You can also email us at bmoviebros at gmail.com. You can like us on Facebook at facebook.com dash bmoviebros. Follow us on Twitter at bmoviebros or my personal Twitter handle at bmoviepaul. Also, check out all our all our other reviews and shows available on our website, bmoviebros.com. Well, that brings us to the end of this week. Um, if you want to join us next week, we'll be taking a look at the 1993 sexploitation film, Gorotica. And Gorotica happens to be a sexploitation film with a twist. The twist being necrophilia. Yay, sex with corpses. Well, it's somebody's fetish at least. God damn it. Just, just why the fuck? Oh, yeah. She Wolves of the Wasteland, number one. Pom Pom Girls, number two. I don't need an explanation here. Yeah, m- mine's the same. I don't really... I think it goes without saying. So tune in next week for Gorotica. It's one that you shouldn't miss. Until next time, friends. Be brave, be alive, and be back for more. Get <laughs> on,